attendance. Um, this is the circuit session, and all these people are solving like fantastic problems of you know things that all of us have every day when we're building and prototyping with circuits. So we're talking about the reality of HCI here in the making. So enjoy it. Hi everyone, my name is De Yan Wu from National Taiwan University. Today I am going to present our work, Circuit Science, Automatic Sensing of Physical Circuits and the Generation of Virtual Circuit to Support Software Tools. This work is joined with my advisor, Mike Chen, and lab mates from the Mobile and HCI Lab at ATU, NTU. For circuit prototyping, the breadboarding is the most prevalent way to design and implement circuits. With the rise of the Mac movement, more and more people start to uh, breadboard circuits and share their project with the community online. However, if users want to share a physical circuit via the internet, they need to manually create virtualized circuits, which is time consuming. Besides, many new technologies have been in introduced to help users breadboard. But the issue of virtualizing circuits has not been solved. As an example, Toastball introduced automatic debugging of breadboard circuit for common errors. However, these powerful capabilities require virtualized circuits. That means users have to manually create virtualized circuit first. And the virtualized circuit is time-consuming and error points. As seen in this, uh, in this video, users need to place components and uh, draw wires at uh, the corresponding position. We recruit four users to understand how much time it takes. User first construct physical circuit according to a circuit diagram and then reconstruct their circuits again in software. In a result, users spend about the same amount of time they spend 26 minutes building the physical circuits, but spend 24 minutes on manually create virtualized circuit. It's very terrible. Imagine if we can sense and visualize a circuit as we build and modify it, all automatically without any manual efforts. That's what circuit sense does. So how do we sense circuits? Let's take a look how users build a simple circuit on breadboard. See that uh, the users press a component and a wire one by one on breadboard, and finally compose a circuit. Yes, and uh, if user with circuit sense, when user insert a wire, then we automatically sense the wire and generate generate it on a virtual file. And uh, when the user plugs an LED, we can automatically recognize its type and uh, visualize it. And when the user press a resistor, we automatically detect the resistance and uh, create it on a virtual circuit. Okay, so what kinds of information do we need to know? First, locations. We need to know where a component is inserted into breadboard. Second, type. We need to know what type of a component it is. Third, specification of a component. For example, we need to get the resistance of a resistor. So, location, type, and the spec. These three key information we need to sense the circuits. Let's start from location. Our approach is to sense all pins location of a component. In pin location sensing, our goal is to create a system which is able to continuously sense all pins insertion and removal without affecting user created circuits. So how to do that? First, we look into the inner structure of a breadboard. The breadboard consists of many small metal clips. And these clips are used to hold pins of components and make electrical connection. If we look closer, we can find the clip will be bending. By sensing this bending, 
we can know which clip is embedded and uh, get the pin location of a component. So the question becomes how to sense the bending. Our solution is using strain gauge to detect the bending. We attach strain gauge to all clips on the breadboard. And when, and when component plugs, the strain gauge will produce a small variation of resistance. We measure the variation to determine whether the clips are bending. In this approach, we not only can continuously sense and the status of clips, and, but also not affect user-created circuits. So that is how sensing clip look like. To retrieve all data from 80 sensing clips, we design a circuit split into four parts. The first two parts sensing clips and the multi, multi pressure cascading and to connect all sensing clips to our system. And the wisdom bridge part is to precisely measure the tiny resistance change by a classical wisdom bridge and the 100 gain amplifier. Finally, an analog to digital converter in M4 controller co collect the voltage value produced by wisdom bridge part. And in our system, the status change of a clip will generate a voltage variation at least 30 millivolts. In our prototyping, we implement the circuit, the circuit on our custom PCB. The special prototyping design is in sensing clip part. To attach all clips on our PCB, we design clip pads which let us solder sensing clip on the pads. And beside the clip pads, there are many small circle pads which are used to connect the leads of string gauge. Yeah, and that's the results. Okay, there are three types of behavior about component location. First, the user add a component on a breadboard. Second, the user remove a component from a breadboard. Third, the user change the pin of a component on a breadboard. By detecting this behavior, we can know where the user placed the component. So according to these actions, we implement corresponding functions. First, we group new pins within a small time window for a component. Now we set the window time as two seconds. Also, we will automatically remove the unplugging components according to the status of clips. So we check the changing pin of a component as a user adjusts one pin of a component. So the component location are good now. Let's move on to component type. OK, in this stage, we develop a component recognition system to identify an electronic component individually. Currently, circuit sense is able to detect components include two pin, three pin, and eight pin components. Those components are popular components on the website of SparkFun. In total, we pick up two, 22 types of components. To sense these components, we use the 50 hertz square wave to actively probe the circuits. The initial voltage is 0 0.5 volts. And if needed, the voltage could adaptively increase to the maximum voltage 2 volts. That's because some components such as LEDs and beepers require higher voltage to switch on. So how did this problem help us identify components? When the users plug a component into, our system will control a wave generator to produce the uh, the square wave, and the square wave will pass through the party press A and go into one of the pins. Besides, the system connects another component pin to ground, and it will make the square wave transform because of the inner structure of a component. And then we control multi press B to loop each pin and collect the transform signal. Now the sample rate is 75,000 hertz, and we retrieve about 2,000 points for each point for each pin. In this way, we will get a lot of transform waves. But how this 
but uh, for this combination, some components like IC chips will uh, require long corrosion time. So in our case, an IC chip will cost about 30 seconds for data correlation. To lower the correlation time for an IC, we only capture 32 waves rather than all possible waves. And it only costs about five seconds. And then finally, that's how the correct, uh, correct waveform looks like. Based on these waveforms, we apply machine learning technique to uh, classify this data into the corresponding component. For the process of uh, component classification, in each wave, we first retrieve statistical features from frequency and the type domain. And then we combine all features into one factor as the input of random forest classifier. Finally, the classifier will recognize each data as the corresponding components. For training data, we collect uh, 11,000 output waveforms, uh, that is uh, uh, 500 for each type of uh, components. And uh, evaluate uh, the, the accuracy using cross validation. And uh, in our experience, our system attains 100% accuracy to identify these 22 types of components. Okay, so this, so two phase of detection, we almost finish automatic sensing except for component spec. Component specifications are also important when users design circuits such as resistance, capacitance, and the inductors. So we try to me measure the specification for the resistor, capacitor, and inductors. It's easy to calculate those properties as the component on the test is just in series with three resistors, RW, RNA, and RNC. For example, for a resistor, the whole circuit is just a 42 divided circuit. So we can calculate the resistance according to 42 divided rule. And for, for capacitors, the whole circuit is an RC circuit. And according to catch curve circuit rules, we can calculate the capacitance. But to lower the noise, we convert the equation to a formula with linear relationship and use linear, use linear programming to predict the accurate capacitance. With these rules, we can calculate the specification for a resistor, capacitor, and inductors. The detectable ranges and the average errors are shown in this table. The limits of length are based on resolution and the speed of ADC. Finally, we successfully obtain uh, these three kinds of information and then we achieve the real-time component sensing. But how do we turn the single component sensing into whole circuit sensing and make sure it truly works? Actually, a circuit is composed of serial circuit and uh, parallel circuits. Okay, for serial circuits, at the most one point, one endpoint of a component is connected to other components. That means the other the, the other endpoints are floating. So our co our component our component recognition approach can work fine because the active probing will not be interfered by other components. But, however, a parallel circuit makes the endpoints connect to other components. So, yes, it's limited to detect the circuits correctly. But uh, except wires, because wire is equal to short circuits, which would not be disturbed by other components. So we propose two approaches to accomplish parallel circuits. One is putting components first, and then closing circuit by adding extra wire. In this way, a parallel circuit is made up by, by a wire, which is not interfered by other components. So putting component first, and then wiring. Uh, the other approach is using our software extension to revise the components. In this way, Users just spend small time revising the errors. And then, okay, let's total uh, how circuit works, how circuit sense work. Let's review by this video.
conclusion, CircuitSense presents the automatic virtualization of user-created circuit and help users able to easily get the benefits from the software. So thank you for listening. Welcome to ask questions. Bjorn Hartmann, UC Berkeley. Uh, fantastic work, and uh, I commend you for doing all that manual assembly. That cannot have been easy to put all those train gauges on the clips. Um, my, my question is about the, um, your active probing approach. Um, it seems it worked for the kind of components you've shown there, but can you comment on when, might it, when is it safe and when might it not be safe for what type of components to actively inject uh, voltage into the system? Uh, okay, that's a good question. Uh, actually, we, if we sense the component is equal to the, the broken circuit, just let uh, no signals from the components, we will adaptively increase the voltages and uh, try, to, uh, try to let the components have the functions. So uh, if the components will work in lower voltages, that, that is safe. But if the components uh, is not working in low, low voltage, we think it, it is safe if we increase the voltages. Yes. So have, have you come across any components where that approach won't work? Um, I think, uh, actually, I now very sure about this question, but uh, I think it is, it is safe for probably these components because, um, because I think uh, 0 0.5 voltage is very safe voltage, right? But uh, if we increase the voltage, maybe uh, let it maybe uh, cause the damage on components. So we are very safely to increase the voltage. So I think it's not proper it will not be problematic if we increase the voltage. Yes. Thank you. Uh, sounds very interesting. I'm not expert in this area, but could you mention a little bit about previous work? Nobody ever done this before? Uh, yes, thank you, thank <laughs> Yes. And, uh, 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 do you mean uh, the last uh, with the paper, circuit so stack, or? I, I just want to, do, I, I don't know, I missed related work section. So what kind of previous work there in this problem domain? I just, I just want to know. Uh, this, this work is start, uh, cost uh, uh, half of years, I think. And uh, we finished the circuit stack last week's work and we start to build these systems. Yes. Okay, thank you. Hi. Hi. My question would be to how precisely can you detect the component? For example, if you detect that it's a transistor, can you actually detect the exact type of the transistor? Uh, can you see me again? Can you actually detect the exact type of a transistor, of a diode? Oh, no, we cannot. Uh, we cannot identify the different type of diode, but uh, we know that it's diode. So we cannot identify the diode and the uh, uh, the, the luminated emitted light diode LED, so we cannot identify this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody has a pressing question? We could do one more. If not, I have a lot of questions, but I'll ask you after after we're all done. All right. So